April 10th, 2023 in Louisville, Kentucky. So we're going to listen to four number one calls involving again, another mass shooting on one of the calls. You can actually hear gunfire in the background, which is extremely terrifying. And the last time I'm on call that we're going to listen to is from the mother of the shooter. Let's take a listen. 911 operator Davis, what is the address of the emergency? Um, um, oh my God, what's the address? Western Boy. Oh my God, there's an active shooter there. But, um, oh my God. Uh, what's the, is anybody know the address to Western Boy? Oh my God, I just watched it. Oh, on a beer. Ma'am? Ma'am? I'm sorry. Yes, I'm Okay, ma'am. Okay, hold on. Just let me, what's, yeah. your, what's your name? 333 East Main Street. Okay, what is your name, ma'am, please? My, Spell the last name for me, please. Oh, my God. Okay, wh wh where are you calling from? I'm calling from my branch at 9708 Brownsboro Road. Okay, what, bar what, what business are you with? Old National Bank. Okay, stay, okay, stay on the line with me here, please. Stay on the line. Okay, ma'am, what's your callback number? Is there an extension? <laughs> Oh, 5,000 to the red line. Oh, my God. Okay, sorry. I know you're, you're upset, but I've got, for me, in order to get information from you, I need to, yes. because you're the only person calling is into us. Okay, so 333 East Main Street, what's the name of the business we're going to? It's Old National Bank. Okay, that's the business we're going to also? And how do you know you have an active shooter on the site? I just watched it. How do you watch it? You watched it on a meeting. On a team's meeting? Yes, we were having a board meeting. Video board meeting? Yes, okay. with our commercial team. Okay. And did you see the suspect? Oh, yes. Okay, stay on the line with me here. Stay on the line with me, please, okay? He's a white man. Okay, okay. Let, um, me, let me get the run sent up. Give me, just stay on the line with me, okay? One moment here. Okay. This video is still going. Oh, my God. There's no, I can't see anything now except for some of the ground. Give me the description of the subject, please. Um, I just saw it with the white man, dark hair. Okay. Um, what about clothing? He khakis on. I think he had khakis on, maybe. He had a rifle, gun. Khaki pants or shorts. And what, what, do you know what board or room number they would have been? Um, it was the board room. It's on, it faces the river side of the building. Um, okay. And it's, um, it's a circular shape office, the branches, you walk in, and the retail center's on the left, which is probably still locked. Okay. The boardroom and all the offices you enter. Okay, so how did, so right. the 333 East Main Street, is there a suite number on Old National Bank for 333 East Main it's Street? the first floor. No, it's the entire first floor. The entire first floor. Okay, did you see anybody shot or did you just see the guy? I seen somebody on the floor, and I start, we heard multiple shots, and everybody started okay. saying, "Oh my God!" Okay. And then he came into the floor. Okay, say, okay. What was the color of the shirt or the clothing he had on his shirt? I heard the khaki pants. Uh, oh God, I don't know if I can go back on. Okay, the, no, you're fine. Do you do you remember like at all anything? Did he have like? The, did you give me any further description? Do you remember like did he have any ball cap? Did he have any facial covering? Did he have anything like that on? One backpack? I don't think he did. I don't okay. think he did. It happened. He was in and out of that room very quickly. Okay. But it was. Okay. It was we, like, okay. We do. Like, we do have multiple people calling now. Okay. We do have okay. to run up. Can you stay on the line with me just a moment, please? Okay. Yes. <laughs> the run started we've got them coming we got other people inside the building calling us okay um so we do we have them going that way okay I, I, i'm going to try to get some other calls and see if there's people in the building we need to talk to okay but we do have everybody responding okay okay ma'am okay we're getting them out there okay okay i'm going to go ahead and disconnect with you because i want to see if we can have to talk to other people there so we can try to help them out too okay Okay. okay. All right, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs>
911, Operator Frost, where is your emergency? Hi, I'm at 333 East Main Street. We are an active shooter. 333 East Main Street? Yes, we will contact you. We have an active shooter. Okay, yes ma'am. What's your name? Are they inside or outside? Inside. What's your phone number? Four. Has anybody been shot? Yes. How many people? I don't know. Probably eight or nine. Eight or nine people have been shot? Uh-huh. Are you with any of them? Yes, but I'm in a closet hiding. Just stay on the line with me. Okay. Can you uh, see the person? Are you able to give me a description? I, I know who it is. He's probably six feet tall. He's young, a young male. How do you know the person? He works with us. What, uh, what race is he? White. What color clothing is he wearing? Oh, I didn't see that. I think he has on like a light blue shirt and dark pants. Do you know where exactly he's located now? No, I don't. Just stay on the line with me. How many people okay. are in the room with you? Uh, I don't know. I don't know who's here. I'm, I'm in the closet with one person. Yeah, I hear. I hear. I hear gunshots. Just stay on the line with me, okay? Where exactly in the building are you located? I'm in the conference room on the first floor. And Is that shoot shots fired? Yes, it is. Stay quiet. We've got everybody coming, okay? Okay. How long will it be before they get here? They're already on the way. I know, but how long? How far away are they? I'm not sure where they're coming from but we've got everybody coming. Okay. Just stay quiet and stay where you're at, okay? Do you know what kind of injuries there are? I don't know. I just know a lot of blood. Okay. Do you know where he's at in the building? I don't. I think he's in the hallway, but I don't know. Okay. I think one of my coworkers is had it. Okay. Just ha try to take, have them take some deep breaths. In through the nose, okay. out through the mouth, slow, deep breaths. I'm in the closet. I can't tell them. I can see them outside. Okay. That's okay. We've got several people already are grabbing, okay? Okay. <laughs> Is 
Is that shot fired? Yeah. Okay. Just stay quiet. Are they hearing that? Yes, there are several people there. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anybody that's with you, are they injured? No, she's okay. Okay. Do you hear the person talking? Yes, I'm still here. Just stay quiet, yeah. okay? Yeah, well, I'm, 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 I
Responders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead and it's disconnect. Okay. I'm okay. I'm on the phone with my one. one. I'll go ahead and disconnect. Okay. I'm gonna disconnect. Okay. 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 All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Nine one one. Operator Toby, where is your emergency? Uh, I am at three thirty three East Main Street. We have an active shooter in our building. Do you have a description building. of the person? White, May, first name. He's an employee of Old National Bank. Get here now. We need somebody okay, what now. Color, okay, what color shirt is he wearing? Yeah, what color shirt did he have on? White? I don't know. White, I okay. think. He's a tall guy. Where, probably six, probably six four. Do we know first where in the floor. building? Okay. First floor. Do we know where on the first floor that he is now? We don't. Okay, stop yelling, we sir. Stop. They're already on their way. Do we know yeah, how many people there? Yeah, because you don't fucking answer. They had already. People have already been calling, sir. Nine one one operator Valls, where is your emergency? Yes, my um, my 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 son might be getting to have a gun, and he's heading toward the old national at uh, on Main Street here in Louisville. Main Street, old national. Yes, and I, this is his mother. I'm so sorry. I'm getting details secondhand. I'm running to it now. Oh my lord. Okay. And what exactly is going on with him? Why? What? It, what is he saying he's doing? I, I don't know. I'm getting this information from the roommate. He apparently left a note. I think he's and I think he's beside. He's, he's just not. Yes. Hurry. Shut the door. Lock the door and come here. I, I don't know what to do. I need your help. I think he, he's never hurt me once. He's a really good kid. Please don't come up to him. Okay, and you said he was headed to the old national bank. Did he say what he was going to do there? I don't know. I don't know anything. He, but he, we don't even own guns. I don't know where he would have gotten a gun. Okay, okay, so where did you get something. this information from? Who told you what's what going on? His roommate called me. His roommate's very concerned. So this was, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, what's your son's name? An employee there. How old is he? White, black, Hispanic, Asian? White, six, about six four. Six four? Yes. Okay. All right, and what was your name, ma'am? What, what is your name, ma'am? Here's your telephone number. I've got your name and your phone number in here, and I'm going to let the officers know that you believe headed to the old National Bank on Main Street. And okay? That's, that's correct. Okay. And, and Please, he's, he's not violent. Mm -hmm. He's never done anything. Please, please. Okay, and you don't believe he owns guns? I know he doesn't own any guns. Okay, and so did the roommate mention him having any weapons or anything? Um, I, I, I don't I, I don't know, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get into my car. My mm -hmm. son's talking to me, and they're asking me questions about other things. Um, uh, and I'm shaking. Uh, I, I think maybe his girlfriend... Okay. I don't know, maybe he will solve them. I, I, I don't know. Okay. All right. I don't know what have your name and number in here, and if officers have additional questions, we'll give you a call back, but I'm going to let them know, okay? Oh, okay. So should I, what, what do I do? Just go there? No, I don't want you to go to the location, okay? I'm, you what, don't want no, to? I don't want you to go to the location, ma'am. Okay? Um, we're going to the location. Right. I don't want you to go to the location. We have, a, we have a situation that's going on down there right now. We've already had calls from other people, and I do not need you to go to the location at this time, okay? It's dangerous there. You've had calls from other people, so you're already there? Yes, at Old National Bank on East Main Street, we have. And I'm advising you not to go to the location because it is an unsafe situation, and officers are already at the location, ma'am, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, bye. So this piece of human garbage killed five people and injured eight others, two of whom were police officers. The shooter actually worked at the bank, so he knew his way around the building. So why did he do this? What was the motive? Well, this is 
what I found. 25-year-old Connor James Sturgeon, a graduate in finance from the University of Alabama, began working as a commercial development professional at the bank in June 2021, after three summer internships between 2018 and 2020. In just under a year, he received a promotion, and as of April 2022, his job title was Syndications Associate and Portfolio Banker. And according to the Daily Mail, that same year, he moved out of his parents' home in Greenville, Indiana, and moved to Louisville. But for reasons not known, his bosses decided to let him go, and he was to lose his job. However, it remains unclear when they made the decision to let him go. They also don't know if Sturgeon was formally informed, if indeed he was, and why he was being fired. And on April 4th, Sturgeon purchased a AR-15 style rifle without telling anyone. Six days later, April 10th, on the day of the attack, he left a suicide note for his parents. What that letter read is not yet known. He also texted a friend saying that he would shoot up the bank and posted memes on Instagram, including one that said, They won't listen to words or protests. Let's see if they hear this. And his roommate, Dallas Wallen, had no idea of Sturgeon's intentions and is cooperating with police. Sturgeon's girlfriend, who has not been named, had no idea of what he was going to do either, and is also cooperating with the investigation. So the attack began at around 8.30 a.m. on Monday morning. And right before he enters the bank, he texted his family saying, I love you. After that, he moves towards the conference room while shooting and returns to the lobby. He waits for about 90 seconds before cops arrive at 8.41 a.m. Four minutes later at 8.45 a.m., Sturgeon is killed by police. The suspect was shot and was down inside the building as they cautiously approached the building seven minutes after arriving on scene. It was later determined the gunman was in fact killed by police. Five people died in this mass shooting Monday morning. Several others are continuing to recover following the shooting. During today's press conference, police commended the officers for their quick action in the moments after taking down the suspect, saying they ultimately helped save lives. Now, I also found this article on CNN that read, he left notes revealing part of his goal was to show how easily a mentally ill person can buy a gun in the US. Authorities, however, have not yet released a motive for the shootings and have not released the notes he left behind either. Sturgeon also live streamed the attack on Instagram, but was quickly taken down by Meta or Facebook. Yeah, give me your opinion on this case. What do you think? Um, obviously, these mass shootings happen way too often. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, move on to the to the next one. November 12, 2022 in Las Vegas, Nevada. On this one, we're going to listen to two Namamon calls involving an incident that occurred in Craig Ranch Regional Park. Let's take a listen and I'll give you all the info after. Yeah. Yeah. 911, police, fire, or medical? I just got stabbed at Craig Lance, right? It's Craig Lance, right? Did you say stabbed? Yeah, I got stabbed in the stomach. What part, of the, what part of the park are you in? Skate park. The skate park? How old are you? Yeah, yeah. 23. 23. Are you white, black, Hispanic, or Asian? I'm mixed. I'm mixed. with what? It's not stopping. Mixed, mixed with what? Are you white? You're Hispanic and Samoan? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, what color clothes are you wearing? I got a tank top on. What color? What color? White tank top, what color pants or shorts? Uh, okay. Who stabbed you? Oh, they got them on the floor. Who has who has them on the floor? Security or? Uh, no, no, yeah, they got them. They trying to get them. Come on. Okay, so they're trying to get the suspect on the floor. He ran. He ran. Okay, who's who who stabbed you though? Was the person white, black, know. Hispanic? Oh no. You don't know? Okay. Where were you stabbed? In my stomach. 
Okay. Stabbed in the stomach. Yeah. If somebody gets met, yeah, if you can get medical. Okay. So who's trying to get the suspect right now? Yeah, nobody. Nobody knows what he looked like. Yeah. Oh no! Hurry up, please. No, no, I know, but nobody knows what the guy looks like that did this. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me. We're coming as fast as we can, okay? Does yeah. anybody know what the person yeah. looks like? Yeah. Nobody knows. No, no, don't hang up. What's your name? Hello. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you with the vehicle. What, what's your name? Can you hear me? Yeah, they're coming as fast as they can. What's your name? I'm going to lay down. Hello? 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 Oh my god, bro, these things are not mentioned. Hello? 911 police, fire or medical? Medical. Just a moment, have the address ready. Fire or medical, what's the address of the emergency? Uh, Craig Lance Park, medical. Emergency. Tell me exactly what happened. Uh, my brother has been stabbed and he's better, uh, so we need the medical now at Craig Lance. Okay, we hear one. We hear one coming. Yeah, they're on the way. Are you with him now? Yes, I am. Okay. I just have a couple more questions, okay? One moment. And um, PD, are you on the line? Yes, yes, I am. Sir, what's your name? Uh, my name is... And what's your brother's name? Uh, Do we know who did this to him? Uh, the guy ran away. Does he know the guy? No, we don't. Do we know why this happened? Uh, well, some older kid was messing with my little cousin, and he kept talking to to him, so we came over here to see what happened, and some guy put a knife out on my brother and stabbed him. Okay. Sir, how old is your brother? Uh, he's, uh, Ken Hardy, 23. No, hold up. 18, 19, 23. He's 23. He's 23. Rob about to fight. Is he awake? Huh? Is he awake? Yes, he's awake. The talks are here right now. Okay. Are you speaking with them? Yeah, he's right here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can I take a description of the person, or did you not see him? Uh, I couldn't really get a good look on him. I couldn't do okay. I know he was, uh, he was Asian, tan. He had some type of long straight hair. He was wearing tan pants today. And he had, I think he had a, I don't know what else he was wearing today, but after that he ran. Oh, no, he had a white shirt on today. He had a white shirt on too. White shirt. And what direction did yeah. he run? He ran. So when he comes to the skate park area, he ran by the basketball courts, and he ran that way. He kept running. Toward the basketball courts. Okay. And do you know what color pants he had on? No, not really. I know, all I know is he had a black and white shirt. Maybe black pants, but I know he was kind of, he was Asian, tan. And uh, how about how old? Uh, probably around, he looked like he was at the age of 18. Okay. All right, go ahead and talk to the officers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. So they didn't release the names of the people who called 911, but according to witnesses, this is what led up to the stabbing. Two groups were hanging out at the park, and an argument was instigated by a man from one of the groups. This man took out a pocket knife and stabbed three people. Police didn't say what exactly they were arguing about. Anyway, when EMTs arrived to the property, they find the three men suffering from stab wounds. All three were taken to the hospital and recovered from their injuries. And this is what the lead detective in the case said. We believe this is not a random act of violence and we're working on all available leads. To help protect the integrity of the case, no suspect information will be available. Three men ages 18, 23, and 40 suffered injuries and went to UMC. No one died. Police say two groups of people were fighting 
in the calls after that stabbing, it sounds like people tried to hold down the attacker, but they got away and are still on the run. North Las Vegas police say no suspect information is being released to help protect the integrity of the case, but are asking people to call if they have any information. We do have contact information in our web story. Police also tell me more staff were being added to events at the park and lighting would be upgraded. So yeah, this happened about six, seven months ago and I haven't been able to find an update on this case. Hopefully they caught him. But if you know anything about this case, leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to pin it. Let's move on to the next call. April 2017 in Canton, Ohio. A 31 year old mother calls 911 and tells the dispatcher this. Emergency. Lady said she needed medical at 1444 Miami Court, Northeast. I cut my children's throat. You cut yourself in the foot? I cut my children's throat and then cut my wrist. Please help my children. You cut your children's throat and then slit your wrist? Yes. Four, 14. How many kids do you have? Four. Two, 1434 Miami Court. 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 Ma'am? 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 Please leave your message for... This is the Canton Police Department. It's Tuesday, April 4th, 9.02 in the evening. You called 911 and stated that you had hurt your children and yourself. I need you to give us a call back and give us some more information so we can see what's going on. You can call us back at 911 or non-emergency 330-649-5800. Okay, so I really want to let you guys know right off the bat that the kids survived. The girls ages 7 and 10 were released from Akron Children's Hospital and have been placed with a foster family. And Nicole James Amon, the mother, was arrested at Mercy Medical Center on two counts of attempted murder and two counts of attempted aggravated murder. The judge set a $1 million bond. Also, police didn't say why she did this or if she was on drugs or alcohol. The big question is why, and that's why police are trying to piece together details in this case. What led 31-year-old Nicole Amon to call police, reporting that she had injured her two daughters with what they believe was a box cutter. Whether she regretted what she'd done, I, I don't know that. Uh, we just know that she's the one that called. That call was made around 9 Tuesday night from a home on Miami Court. Police say they had to force entry into the home when they arrived on scene, soon finding two young girls ages 10 and 7. They had cuts on their throat that were severe enough um, to require hospitalization, but they didn't appear to be immediately life-threatening. But thankfully, they'll be okay. The mother was found with what they say was superficial cuts on her wrist. She was evaluated at a local hospital and released back into police custody, charged with two counts of attempted murder and two counts of attempted aggravated murder. Police say the mother has not spoken to officers since calling 911. Now a community is left with unanswered questions. And like I mentioned in the beginning of this case, this happened in 2017. And the latest update I could find is this. Nicole James Amon charged with two counts of attempted murder, both first degree felonies. If she is convicted, each charge carries up to 11 years in prison. I actually did manage to find an update on this case. She was sentenced to 15 years in prison. In my opinion, I think this person should rot in prison. But uh, tell me, what do you think? Do you think 15 years is enough? Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. Let's move on to the next call. April 12, 2022, in the Mirage, Arizona. A woman who works for the Thompson Ranch Elementary School calls 911 and tells the dispatcher this. Let's take a listen to the call. 
911, Phoenix Police, Fire or Medical. Police, we have, a, we have a person with a gun at the back of our cafeteria, cafeteria door trying to enter the premises. Okay, and you're at Dysart Elementary? Thompson Ranch Elementary, 11800 West Thompson Ranch Road. We're in full lockdown. We don't know. It was reported to the front office. I'm in the front office. It was in our cafeteria, which is a distance. So nobody actually seen a male with a gun? It's just a report? No, it's a, it's a report by our cafeteria manager that a male with a gun was trying to enter the cafeteria doors from our rear entrance. According to multiple reports, this is what transpired. Police said a man who appeared to have a handgun unsuccessfully attempted to gain access to the campus through an exterior door. The campus immediately went into lockdown and the man fled, never having gained access to the building. Parents began to arrive at the school during the lockdown and became confrontational with officers when they weren't allowed inside of the school. So after a few hours, police located the suspect and he was taken into custody. His name was not released, but three family members were arrested for trying to get into the school while it was still on lockdown. They were worried about their kids and wanted to get them out. Investigators identified the suspects as 22-year-old Vincent Raul Castaneda, 22-year-old Jonathan Vincent Davis, and 48-year-old Darlene Gonzalez. Castaneda was booked on one charge of possessing a deadly weapon on school grounds, one count of obstructing governmental operations, and one count of disorderly conduct. Davis was booked on one count of disorderly conduct as well, and Darlene's charges are still pending. Darlene Gonzalez in all black with the sunglasses, her son Vincent Castaneda in the blue. The confrontation escalates quickly. In the pushback, Gonzalez admits a gun fell from her son's waistband. That's when she says her son was tased. She says another man in the white on the ground was also tased. So I put my hand like very shocked. So I said, what's going on? Wait, officer, like, let me explain what's going on. He didn't do nothing. Somebody grabbed me from the back really tight and I didn't know who it was. So I, when I went to go turn around, he flung me over and I went like up the ground, fell and I banged the back of my head really hard. It all unfolded Friday morning. El Mirage police say they received a call that a man with a handgun was trying to get into Thompson Ranch Elementary School. The school went into lockdown. Gonzalez says her 13-year-old daughter texted her and that her and her husband were the first parents to arrive. As police worked to sweep the building, a suspicious package was located. With tensions already heightened, more family members started to arrive. That's when investigators tell us several of them tried to push past officers and get into the building. It was chaotic. I did not, I did not try to assault an officer. I did not go in there charging. Late today, police identified the three people arrested. The two charged are Gonzalez's son, Vincent Castinerda, along with another man, Jonathan Davis. Authorities say charges against Gonzalez are pending. Yeah, give me your thoughts on this one as well. What would you do if you were a parent in that situation, in that scene? What would you do? Let's move on to the, I believe this is the last one. March 21st, 2023 in Staten Island. A group of kids make a pretty bizarre 911 call. Let's take a listen. What's the address in Staten Island? We don't know. You don't know? Yeah, we're like, we're stuck in the sewers. You're stuck where? In the sewers. But what location, where, where sewer did you go into? Like near the Staten Island Zoo. Near the Staten Island Zoo? You know a street? Yeah. Like on Broadway and close. How did you guys get in there? We went through the tunnel. Hello? 
Yeah. Hey, did you guys go in from Broadway or Marling, the main entrance? Near, like, we went in through, like, there's a lake near the cemetery. Yeah. And we went All right, where did you go in from? Did you go in from Broadway? It's, it's like, Clove Lake. Where? In the parking lot? You, you, no, no, no. You know where the, uh, the cemetery is? Okay, I know a cemetery across street, yeah? Yeah. Next to it is like a lake and stuff. We're like, and there's a tour. We're in there. You're inside Clove Lake Parks? Yes. Closer to the cemetery? Yeah. All right, but then, okay, but, but what do you what do you mean by a sewer? Is it like a grate? It's like it's like a tunnel where all the pipes are. Like it's kind of like it's here. Okay, so how like how the, did, all right, let me ask you a question? How did you get there? Did you walk through the through the through the cemetery? We crawled. It's like it's like a tunnel. Like listen to me. I know I know the area. Listen to me. Hey, I know the area very well. I'm trying to ask you. How did you get to the sewer? How did you, where did you walk from? Did you walk through the oh, cemetery? Yeah, we walked through the cemetery, and uh, it's like the start of Cove Lake Park. You walked through the cemetery, right? Yeah. Did you go right or left at the end of the cemetery? No, we went like down. You went right. down, we okay. Right. You went down, and then once you went down, listen to me, once you went down, was the sewer left, right, straight, where was it? I need you to guide me. Right. 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 Oh, to the right side. How long did you walk for? We like... Yeah, we walk a lot. See, I'm not lying. I'm going to get you some help, okay? I, I hear something. Wait, hang on. I hear the sirens. Yeah. It sounded like it went past us. Hold on. We're going to get to you. I can now, yeah, now you can scream as loud as you can. They want you to scream and yell. They can hear you, so scream. So I want all you guys to scream. Call for help, guys. They, they hear you. Call for help. <laughs> Keep screaming, guys. Keep screaming. I want you guys to scream as loud as you want. No, they're not gone. You you hear the sirens because there's other people coming also. That's what you're hearing. So they're not going anywhere. We're going to get you out of there. So just hang in there with me, okay? You're not going. They're not going anywhere. What you're hearing is the rest of the sirens of the rest of the help that's coming to get you. Wait, wait. So they found the entrance? They, they're going to find it. They found the entrance where you guys walk in through. So they're going to walk the same way in there, and they're going to come get you out. Vision 8, 10, 4. We, we, uh... We might have hands on the kids right now. 10 4. Division 8 to Staten Island. Division 8. Box 391, we have all five children removed from the sewer and uh, EMS is going to be as we speak. 10 4. 10 4. Like you just heard in the call, the kids are fine. Police said five boys ages 11 to 12 went into the drain and got lost. They panicked and called 911 at around 6 p.m. They were stuck in the drains for about an hour. Falling for at least 15 minutes and they became disoriented. Five boys ages 11 and 12 called 911 after getting lost. Firefighters had to figure out where they were. The boys had no idea. It happened about six Tuesday evening. The boys entered the storm drain in Clove Lakes Park. It was dark inside and space was limited. The boys were lost for about an hour. It took coordination, specific equipment, meter devices, a rope, and the skills of a few firefighters to find them. I crawled in. They met me halfway. The boys had traveled about a quarter of a mile from where they entered. They were crawling on their knees for over an hour or about an hour. So his knees were hurting and it, and it was it was dark down there. They had one cell phone light. Eventually, they were found and pulled out to safety here near the Staten Island Zoo. They were very nervous. They were in this tube for maybe an hour. Yeah, I think these kids got really lucky because, yeah, it could have ended up so, so bad. They could have suffocated and... 
gotten stuck and maybe no one would have been able to find them so thankfully they had that phone but yeah i think they were just you know just kids being kids um yeah what do you think about this case let's move on to now this actually is <laughs> the last one let's check it out September 12, 2015 in Lake County, California. So these last time I'm on calls that we're gonna listen to took place during the Valley Fire near Cobb Mountain. There were 254 calls made to the Lake County Sheriff's Office. The following are small audio clips from those calls. Let's take a listen. 911 emergency. Hey, uh, we have a fire in the High Valley in the backyard. Okay. Across our neighbors' house. In the backyard is by the people's houses. They got horses and stuff. They're not okay, home. Okay, stay on the line. I need to transfer you, okay? 911, are you reporting the wildland fire in Cobb Mountain? Uh, yes, there's one across the street from us. It looks like the house is on fire. But while I have you on the phone, can you tell me how big the fire is? Right now, it doesn't look too big. Yeah, I'm at High Valley Grove. Is the fire here? Do I leave? Yeah. If you feel threatened, you can leave, yes. Uh, I'm not threatened. Feel threatened. The guy's right down here in the helicopter. And the fire is burning very close to my house. Okay. And my wife is disabled, and I have no vehicle. No vehicle. And okay. I have to get stay. out of here. Uh, Sir, stay, stay in the line. I need backyard. to transfer you to Cal Fire. Stay in the line, okay? Okay. 911, what's the location of the emergency? I'm at the uh, High Valley Road fire, and my wife is disabled, and I have no car. And I have to maybe try to get her out of here. I'm on Bottle Rock Road, but the fire is right on top of us. It's right on top of us. We're probably going to lose the house. There is a fire on Cobb Mountain, ma'am. If you feel the need to evacuate or if you're told to evacuate, please do so, okay? What, what's that? If you feel the need or are told to evacuate, please do so. There is a large fire on Cobb. Well, I can't. I don't have a car. I have no way to get out. Uh, I'm reporting that my wife is going to need help evacuating from the Cobb fire. I can't get through the fire line. Okay, and what's going on there that she can't get out? Does she just not have a vehicle? No, she was over, my parents live on Sulphur Creek, and she was helping them get loaded up and evacuated, and was told to go home and start packing stuff up. And I got off work at the geysers, and they won't let me through to go help her. How many people need to be evacuated from there? Three. Three adults? Three adults, two dogs. Okay, well, we can't, we can't worry about the animals right now, sir. You need to call that information into the um, animal control. I can give you that number, but we'll start people up to you for the people, okay? Uh oh, okay. Okay, let me give you the number to animal control. Hi, we have a fire on our property. Okay. In Valley. Okay. Yeah. Okay, stay on the line. I'm going to get you to Cal Fire. I want everybody to get out of the house, okay? Stay on the line with me. Okay, we're going to get out. Okay, stay on the line, ma'am. I'm going to get you some help. Oh, crap. It's okay, ma'am. I'm going to get you some help. Just stay with me, okay? Okay. Okay, it's going to be okay. 911, what's the location of the emergency? Fire is on our property. We gotta get out of the house. 911, what's your emergency? Yes. Uh, we're trying to evacuate at Potterhorn. Yes. My wife has fallen. We're both 82 and we can hardly move. I'm gonna need some assistance. Okay, let me get you over to Cal Fire so they can start, get, try to get a unit out there. Hang on. 911, right. are you recording an emergency? Hi, there's a fire right through the house there, Valley Road. Okay, you need to get out of Hidden Valley. We're trying to as fast as we can. There's a fire across the street in the field. Okay, ma'am, did I just talk to you? I don't know, but I tried to call you. Okay, we've are, we've got fire departments in the area. They're fighting the fire as fast as they can. You need to get out of Hidden Valley. Ma'am, 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 I need you to take a breath for me. I need you to be safe and get out of Hidden Valley. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. I have my dogs, everything. I'm trying to the street. Okay, ma'am, you and your family need to get out. We can notify Animal Control about your animals, okay? Bye-bye. Right, bye. bye. Their mother is with them, and she doesn't know how the hell to get out of there either. We need, like, helicopters or something. Okay, sir, we've got as much as much help as we can in there, but we will um, we will let them know, okay? Okay, you guys don't have any evacuation out right now? That's sir, we have, we have about 50 people out doing evacuations for thousands of people. Okay, it's not a we don't. Okay, well, We're working on me. it. I understand. I'm going to. Sir, sir, I don't know about the roads. All I can do is send people out to Big Beach to help your family, okay? Hello? They directed us all the way around here. Now we're getting street directed out here. 
and we have nobody out here to direct us, and I have a fire burning on the right hand. Where side. are you? In Lake County. Yeah, I understand you're in Lake County, and there's a big fire, but where physically at the spot are you? And, uh, I'm not sure where I'm at, sir. I wish I could tell you. Well, yeah, because I need to know where you are to be able to tell you which direction to go. Yeah, well, my house burned down on Cobb. I'm stranded over here in Lakeport. I'm trying to find a place to go and stay. Where can I go? The fire destroyed 76,000 acres in Lake County, Sonoma, and Napa counties. 1,200 homes were destroyed and four people were killed. Four firefighters were also injured. By the way, these calls remind me of a video that I made a while back. It was the car fire that happened in 2018 and it was actually ignited by a trailer. One of the wheels got a flat and the rim caused a spark and that's when all hell broke loose but there's an amamanka from from that case from um don andrews and it's one of the most sad and disturbing number one calls that i've heard um yeah it's just it's just so sad but uh i'll link it down below in the description just in case you want to watch it but yeah just i'm just giving you a warning it is like i said really sad and, and tragic but yeah guys that's the video thank you all so much for watching and thank you if you're a member and or a patron i really 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 do appreciate it and if you want to support me or the channel there'll be links down below in the description and just real quick i just want to say thank you um for the ones that watched my previous video from me <laughs> working in a in a in a freezer and uh yeah i just want to say thank you for the really really nice comments i mean my eyes got watery i was like ah don't don't you dare cry <laughs> but um yeah i don't know it was just really nice of you guys and all of you you're so kind and thank you for the advice and all of that but yeah again i just want to say thank you and uh hopefully i'll you know accomplish my dream of doing this full time this is what i love to do i love video editing so much and uh shooting video and stuff anyway again thank you i'll see you guys soon i'm gonna go back to editing and uh yeah stay kind pass it around always pass it around yeah bye